Hi, Ty. Uh, one there, Hiromi Aideen, uh, Kure, uh, Green Ronin New, a fifth season role playing game, Yan Ya, uh, Wataya Uri uh, Kachan. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Hiromi Kota, the they, them, uh, one of the writers and developers for the fifth season RPG. Uh, that was Uchina Guchi uh, that I was just speaking, the indigenous language of Okinawa. Uh, just trying to do my part to keep my uh, 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 people's languages alive. Um, I'm here with a small but awesome group of my teammates. Uh, I'll let them introduce themselves and then we'll get into all the cool fifth season stuff that you're actually watching this for. Uh, so, uh, Alice, uh, who are you? Uh, what are your pronouns? And what did you work on for the books? Hi, I'm Alice Rundell, she, her, um, and uh, I worked on one of the adventure scenarios for the fifth season. Nice. Uh, uh, Steve, uh, who are you? What are your pronouns? And what did you work on for the books? Hi, I'm Steve Kenson, he, him. Uh, and I did the primary age system adaptation uh, for the rules chapters for fifth season. Yes, and uh, uh, thank you both for uh, all of your hard work and for being here. Um, so uh, before we get too far in, uh, I'm going to really quickly uh, outline fifth season uh, because uh, as I learned yesterday, not everyone knows. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> right? It, it shocked me too. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, fifth season role playing game is adapted from uh, N.K. Jemisin's uh, best selling sci fi novels, the Broken Earth trilogy. Uh, the books, and in particular its setting, the stillness, uh, mean a lot of things to a lot of people. Uh, it's a harsh land where the threat of Father Earth uh, sending an earthquake or volcano to your hometown is always in the back of everyone's minds. Uh, literally, because Everyone in the stillness has a seismic sensory organ just sensitive enough to give them a running start from uh, death. Uh, well, some people have stronger abilities. We'll talk about them later. Mm -hmm. uh, the stillness is a place of injustice, a place of haves and have-nots, uh, where the wealthy um, have geothermal power, plumbing, uh, uh, refrigerators and the poor, well, they don't have any of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but regardless of where on the socioeconomic ladder your characters are, they have a hometown. Uh, in the stillness, that's called a calm uh, from community. Uh, and it plays a vital part in their identity and chances of survival. Um, uh, calm creation is a uh, core part of the game. Uh, uh, Steve, would you like to uh, give us an overview of that? Sure. Um, in fact, uh, com creation is one of my favorite parts about the game um, because it uh, starts with creating the com. Uh, and uh, the way you set up your fifth season game is the players and the game master get together and go cooperatively through the process of building the calm that the characters will all call home. Um, and they start out with figuring out where in the stillness it is, what kind of calm it is, um, and comms in the fifth season game are characters. Essentially, they have their own traits uh, that describe them both numerically in terms of what are the comms strengths and resources like, um, and they have their own uh, sort of um, qualities to them. What are the, the things that um, are important to the calm? What, are, what, what is its history like? Uh, those kinds of things. And uh, they, the group goes through cooperatively uh, to figure out all of those elements. And then uh, once they've done the, the basic work of sketching out what the calm is like, um, they go through uh, a, one turn or one year, essentially, of our um, uh, calm scale turn of the game, which proceeds, not surprisingly, in seasons. Uh, so uh, essentially, they go through four seasons of the previous year of the comms history um, to determine what the key events 
of those seasons were, what happened in the calm in this past year. Um, and those could be good things, like there was a bountiful harvest, uh, or um, problematic things, like there was a terrible storm or a shake, or uh, some other disaster befell the calm, or things that are you know potentially good or bad that you know, strangers came to visit, or there was a strange discovery made uh, somewhere nearby. And once all of that has been laid out, uh, and the players have a clear sense of both what their character's home is like and what has happened recently, uh, then they go into the process of building their characters who will be the, the focus of that smaller story within the larger context of the comp with all of that background information available to them. So they know where these characters came from, they know what's important to their community. They know what's happened recently. And they can even work those things into their characters' own stories. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. So uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I love the idea that um, comms are so integral to the, the characters that, like, you, you have to you have to start with it uh, mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> um because um one, one of the themes with the books uh is the idea of like home and belonging uh um uh alice so uh you you wrote uh one of our uh fantastic adventures uh without getting spoilery uh <laughs> because uh it'll I honestly I have no idea what the um uh release schedule is gonna be like because uh it's the print industry. No one knows. <laughs> sure. <Right. laughs> so non non-spoilery uh version. Um uh so uh the, the adventure I wrote uh focuses um on some political intrigue um and uh with a a sort of lacing of of mystery as well um it's something that it it does delve into quite a lot is uh the idea of of comms not only the ones that the player has created and and that the players belong to uh but those relationships with other comms and neighboring comms um because something that I find so interesting in in the books is uh, the fact that 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 stone law rule of you know when a season comes, the doors go up. Um, it's every com for themselves. You know, it's it's all about the com survival. Um, but outside of a season, uh, it, it survival is is you know community and trade and um, uh, allies and collaboration. Mm -hmm. Uh, so my adventure goes into a little bit of of that and that kind of um like the the temporiness of relationships and um allyship and and trade and that kind of thing awesome yeah i mean uh i think folks are gonna have a lot of fun with it uh, i hope so <laughs> yeah <laughs> um uh for me i I think I had my hands in just about everything but the mechanics. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and even then with the quick start, I had a bit with the mechanics just because I was trying to uh, condense things to mm -hmm. uh, make word count. Uh, so if if you're playing the quick start and like one of the rules, especially uh, in the stunt section, uh, um, seems like it could use more explanation that's my fault <laughs> it's not steve's <laughs> fault steve's was fantastic i just needed to uh shorten things down mm -hmm. um uh i also wrote uh an adventure uh it's the one that's in the quick start um and uh also without getting too spoilery <laughs> uh it is very calm centric uh um like it it is very much um based in the idea that this isn't the usual role-playing game uh mm -hmm. the characters are not badass kick-ass adventurers who run around and solve every problem with violence 
Uh, you can solve problems uh, in my adventure with violence, um, but because the calm is so important and because your characters live in the calm, uh, if you kill your neighbor, the rest of your neighbors are going to give you a hard time because mm -hmm. they're your fucking neighbors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's one of the really interesting things about uh, adventure and story writing in fifth season is that in a lot of typical adventure role-playing games, characters have a tendency not, never to confront the consequences of their actions. They roll into town, they do their adventure thing, and then they leave. Uh, and it's, it's ra rarely do they stick around to see, you know, what happens after that. But when, you know, adventure is based around the calm, then, you know, everything is, is more, the, the stakes seem higher in that regard. Um, and, you know, like you said, if, if your neighbor gets killed or their house gets burned down, that's a, that's a big deal. And that's that's going to have repercussions in the seasons that follow. It makes all choices really meaningful right. um, and thoughtful, which is is such a cool thing to have. Yeah, uh, I really enjoy how uh, the the game is. Uh, everything is tied to. Uh, your survival and the community's survival which mm -hmm. uh, feed back into each other uh right. like it's not just you and uh your i'm having system bleed did we call it we didn't call it party did we uh we don't really sorry i write for a lot of different games <laughs> and i i never remember uh what the uh collective noun for mm -hmm. uh player characters is uh think... except with scion because mm -hmm. uh i'm in charge of that and i have to know <laughs> <laughs> i don't i don't think we have one for a fifth season beyond just referring to them as characters or as a group or the group like yeah that. the group <laughs> at best um that that would explain why i don't <laughs> know it off it. the top of my head uh well good that i'm not i'm not forgetting well, no, it doesn't matter. Uh, so um, during the introduction, uh, I said that we would talk uh, about uh, folks who have a uh, more developed um, uh, sesapina, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, mm -hmm. uh, seismic uh, uh, sensory organ. Um, so uh just so that i'm not the one constantly talking uh mm -hmm. uh would either of you uh like to talk about uh origins and uh orogeny i'm happy to unless alice would like go ahead so uh in the context of the broken earth world um origins are uh rare individuals who have um the ability to uh, not only sense um, seismic energy and thermal energy related to the movements of Father Earth, they also have the ability to channel that energy and redirect it in a variety of ways. Uh, essentially, Origins can draw on thermal energy and use it, essentially convert it uh, into kinetic energy. Um, and they can do things like still quakes um, or lessen the effects of eruptions uh, and generally enforce what is known as the stillness. Um, but origins can also reverse that process and create shakes and eruptions uh, and massive seismic disturbances, uh, as well as things like robbing all of the thermal energy from the area immediately around them and causing everything in a radius around them to freeze solid. Um, origins uh, have a tremendous amount of power uh, at their disposal. Um, and 
as has often been the case throughout human civilization, people with strange and unusual power uh, are feared. Uh, and uh, in the context of the society of the stillness, both needed uh, and therefore carefully controlled and managed. Um, origins in the stillness, for the most part, are um, essentially drafted uh, and trained uh, to use their abilities for the greater good of maintaining the stillness and helping to prevent and minimize the, uh, the outbursts of Father Earth that are trying to kill his children. Um, but they also aren't given much choice in the matter. Uh, and um, when a, um, a rogue or feral origin shows up uh, in a community, uh, they are often perceived as a threat. Um, and rightly so, because their abilities are very dangerous if they're not handled carefully. And of course, unfortunately, in a self-fulfilling prophecy, perceiving origins as a threat has a tendency to make them into threats um, because when they feel threatened, <laughs> they often reflexively use their abilities, um, often without even intending to, uh, and cause harm. Uh, so uh, they, they occupy a really uh, interesting role uh, in the setting and, and in the game as well. Uh, awesome, thank you. Uh... And uh, because I know that a lot of uh, fifth season fans are going to ask, uh, yes, you can uh, play an origin. Um, in uh, the quick start and the core book, uh, you are going to be uh, somewhat limited, uh, just, uh, just ferals, uh, because the whole process of being uh trained uh especially like in in the fulcrum and running within that uh is very complex and mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. uh it's it's gonna be uh in uh its own book uh which i hope i can say <laughs> <laughs> yeah needless to say there is support planned for fifth season beyond the core book um so I uh, want to kind of shift from uh, mm -hmm. talking about uh, the uh, stillness in the book in general, or sorry, books in general, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, give the two of you a uh, little bit more chance to uh, speak uh, to uh, your own experiences and uh, uh fun with uh the uh uh setting and um uh the project that we've oh uh, wow sorry i just thought about how long we've been working on this mm. yes <laughs> uh it's it's been it's been some time it's been uh, brewing it's been brewing <laughs> not my longest running project uh by a <laughs> good margin but it's up there mm -hmm. um so uh way back whenever i don't want to think about uh there was the call uh for folks uh to um essentially apply to uh work on uh the uh game because um there was well a lot of people were very interested so we we kind of had to uh uh i don't want to say prove ourselves but a uh, pitch mm. ourselves mm -hmm. um so um this is kind of two questions in one uh, uh alice uh what drew you to work on the game um well for me um I, I'm a, a, a narrative systems designer by day for video games, um, and uh, it's my uh, first foray into tabletop RPGs, and so I'm super excited about it. Um, but what what drew me to the first season is, uh, like for me, when I read the books, and like many, I you know, completely fell in love with the the world in particular because it's just 
it, it's so deep and and so intricate and and you know with all the stone lore and the history and even though I, I absolutely adored the story that's being told in the books with with the focusing on origins um I also wanted to you know see so how some of those background characters lived and um you know, but regular people, day-to-day -day lives in their comms, uh, what do they do? Um, how do they live in this just very harsh, unforgiving world? Uh, like, where do they find joy and, and peace uh, with, with the threat of, of the un unstable world all the time? Um, and so as soon as I saw the call, I was like, okay, that's great. That That's being able to expand and, and dive into that world more um both as a, a a writer but also as a player that just seemed so exciting to me and um, mm. i yeah i really enjoyed working on it awesome yeah um mine was uh somewhat similar uh i'm i i'm putting uh steve last for this particular question just because i know that uh your uh path was uh probably significantly different uh than the two of ours <laughs> uh uh so uh for me uh i had been um aware of the books like i uh a lot of folks um especially um my uh blurred friends uh black nerds uh they they're like you, you should read them and i'm like i should read them uh i don't have a lot of free time but uh they're in the back of my mind uh and then i saw the call go out and i'm like okay now i have to read them because <laughs> mm -hmm. the short pitch uh of uh the game seems ridiculously up my alley uh and i marathoned those things <laughs> i didn't think that uh i i knew that they were going to be good i didn't think they were going to be that good uh mm -hmm. and like within a day or two i had just devoured them all and then like gone back to the first one like rereading it i'm like okay yeah no i i <laughs> i i have to try and write on this thing um i'm a little jealous you got to do it all in one go i had the I experience of reading them and having to, waiting for the, for the new ones to come out and that is an intense journey <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i it's it's that sort of um modern uh modern television experience where like there's such a stark contrast between uh getting to experience something all in one go and mm -hmm. then experiencing it like over time uh when mm -hmm. your brain starts filling in uh uh gaps um but yeah i i make a lot of rpgs uh i as i mentioned i'm the line developer for scion um so like uh i again it, very much up my alley uh mm. um every every rpg uh i work on i'm trying to make it uh queerer and uh more colorful uh because representation is fucking important uh it's it why mm -hmm. i didn't start speaking english at the beginning of this mm -hmm. <laughs> uh uh so steve uh uh how did uh uh what drew you to this project slash how did you become involved well uh, because i am on staff with green ranin i was in the pitch meeting <laughs> when we talked about licensing um, fifth season, uh, and uh, I had not read the books at that time, um, so I was um, uh, largely uninvolved in that initial conversation because I didn't really have much to say other than, you know, um, I had read some of Nora Jemison's other work, that she's great, and that, you know, obviously, you know, that, that the, you know, triple award-winning books were well worth looking at, but I didn't have much else you know, to say at the time. Um, and uh, when we decided to move forward with it, 
Um, of course, the very first thing I did was go and read all the books. Um, and uh, I um, really think that the, the, the focus on the, the notion of survival uh, in the in the books, and especially uh, you know what Alice pointed out, not just survival, but how do you get beyond survival and experience something resembling life uh, in in an environment like that um, was really um, powerful, and uh, I think that the uh, the game itself is a very different kind of role-playing game in that regard. Not so, so much in its mechanics, although there are some reflections of that, um, but really in its themes. Uh, and I think we, we saw that uh, when we got initial pitches for, um, I, had, I hesitate to even call them adventures, stories. I mean, adventure is just sort of common RPG parlance. Um, but um, the interesting things that happen to people you know, it, in these comms, um, in that they they have to be different from the usual sort of heroic adventure fair. Um, and I really like that our system of uh, being able to look at things either from the, the big perspective of the comm uh, over the course of seasons or the small perspective of the characters uh, really affords uh, a way to create those stories because you can take, and we talk about this in the game, you can take those seasonal events um, and, and say, and just, you know, kind of not skip over them, but, you know, cover them in sort of a broad strokes way of saying, yes, during the summer season, a terrible storm strikes the calm and these are the effects of it. And you know, you have to deal with that and move on. Or uh, we talk about uh, the notion of the characters intervening in those events um, and uh, going from the big scale to the small scale and saying, okay, we're gonna play the story where that storm strikes the calm. And what your characters do is gonna change the outcome or at least affect the outcome. Uh, and the effects that that, is going to have on your calm. If you are able to figure out that the storm is coming, even though some people say it's nothing to worry about, or you're able to help the calm prepare, or you're able to rescue someone who's in, imperiled, uh, then things are going to be are going to shift, and maybe the effects of that are going to be mitigated in a certain way. Um, and I think that that's a really interesting collaborative resource uh, for the players and the game master um, so that the game master can say, okay, we're going to, you know, skip over the next two seasons of the, of the calm and just say, okay, this happens and this happens. And now in this season, we're going to play out this event, uh, you know, and you can do that however you want. You can focus on every season. You can skip whole years if you wanted to, but still map out the comms progress. Um, and I think that that creates an interesting uh, story generator that's mm -hmm. built in mm -hmm. to the, the game um, because uh, it can be challenging otherwise to, to come up with adventures that don't involve the typical adventuring fare. Go, go collect 10 rat butts and then come right. back to... Uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh... <laughs> yeah. it, it also creates such this wonderful underlying message of, of as you were saying earlier, Steve, with choices and consequence and, and the meaning of that. I mean, having to really think about, you know, your choices as an individual, but then the effect on the group and then the comm, mm -hmm. then the area of the world, then the whole world. And I, ju I just love that parallel and message in our society as well. You know, mm -hmm. how do what, what you do affects people and then all the way up to how do what we do affect the whole world we live in and and both on an individual and a collective basis and mm -hmm. it is something really unique i think to this game yeah i agree yeah 
Um, I I have other questions, but I, I just want to pull on that thread some more just because it's a really cool thread, uh, both in the uh, books and, and in the game. Um, and like connected to uh, the importance of comms for survival and also for sort of uh, driving uh, the story in the books and uh, in uh, the game. Um, there's kind of this idea of uh, wanting to find um, uh, your people, your home, like mm -hmm. uh, that if in in super, super broad super unhelpful strokes uh that's that's the trilogy mm -hmm. <laughs> uh find finding family yeah. and a home uh obviously there's a lot more to the, to the <laughs> books than just that uh but like that's that's a huge theme uh mm -hmm. and like that resonates with me pretty strongly uh uh because like um uh i'm uh shimanchu uh which uh, uh, Ryukyuan, uh, also known as the uh, Okinawa uh, Prefecture of Japan, um, and like my people haven't had our own islands uh, for over a hundred years because mm. uh, at some point Japan decided that they were going to be uh, imperialistic and uh, like colonize is almost too polite <laughs> mm -hmm. um but like there there's sort of this uh tension especially uh, among those of us in uh the diaspora it's like well we have heritage over there mm -hmm. but even if we lived there we wouldn't have the the islands so like how wh where's our home uh mm -hmm. what where where's our community uh and uh in fifth season you can just sort of go it's here <laughs> mm -hmm. uh this this is a place uh that probably has people like me but not necessarily like mm -hmm. people people move uh they they uh migrate to different comms for whatever reasons um and that uh, that kind of pulls uh, my brain to the idea of the different regions uh, within uh, the stillness, uh, which isn't even a question that I had in my notes. Um, but um, uh, Alice, uh, do you have a uh, uh, one of the regions that uh, sort of like resonates with you or that you find more interesting than the others? Um, I've been really fascinate, fascinated by the coastal region. So like the, yeah, the, <laughs> the, so there's the, the, the Western and the Eastern coastal mm -hmm. and they, they do have, uh, the, the different, um, uh, cultures and, and the different types of comms, but like the, the thing they have in common is super dangerous place to live, like in this already right. incredibly dangerous world that is uh, susceptible to earthquakes and, uh and all, all sorts of things mm -hmm. and then they go and take all of that and then live by the sea where right. the tsunamis and um i think in in the history like most of the coastal comms um you know that none of them survive very long because mm -hmm. of being so close to the sea and the the thing i was mentioning earlier about like everything in the still does always has this underlying tone of being temporary mm -hmm. um in the, the the coastals it feels like that that temporary feeling is you know much more near the surface and the way that will affect people's decision making you know like they they know that maybe they're not going to be there or their comms not going to be there as long as other comms and it, it just must you know change the way they think and they do things and i i find mm. it really fascinating mm. i think it's funny hiromi you were talking and um I was thinking about how we have such a tendency to think of, of home as land, mm. uh, you know, in our culture and how uh, in the stillness, 
land is such a threatening thing uh, that you know you can't rely on land you know the land literally hates you uh, you know people in the stillness really say that that father earth hates people and wants to kill them uh, so i mean the land is a threat uh, in spite of the fact that that we rely on it for you know crops and and hunting and all the things that you know sustain life uh, and so it's it's really interesting how in the broken earth series community is people uh, and not land uh, and and like Alice says comms just have everything has this this very temporary quality to it uh, you know the world can literally shift around you um, and the only thing that is that you can hold on to is your is your relationships is the people in your life yeah so true it's it's finding something you know solid in mm -hmm. in a shaky world and the solid right. is home and family and um that's sounding too poetic <laughs> <laughs> sorry my, my brain stuck on shaky world and i'm like <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And and I'm sure we're all wishing that this metaphor was not quite so timely. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Uh, very brief tangent, uh, just because uh sorry, I'm making it longer. Uh I was one of the folks working on um Scarred Lands uh Dead Man's Rust. Mm. Uh, which is about a magical magical contagion uh, mm -hmm. that people don't fucking take seriously, and it ruins like a tons of people. And we started writing this in like 2019, mm -hmm. like before any of COVID mm. stuff. We're like, <laughs> oh, so this is getting released now. All right, well, <laughs> um, uh, so. Um, to, to answer my own question, uh, I'm uh, I, I'm with Alice. Uh, the, the coastals are mm -hmm. uh, the place. Um, like islands are in the setting. We talk about the islands. We mm -hmm. have uh, an example com. You can uh, set your com and uh, your characters in the islands. Um, they are very much their their own kind of thing um and uh for folks unfamiliar with the stillness or who haven't read the uh, books recently uh none of the mainlanders know about the islands they they mm -hmm. just have no idea that people actually live there they just sort of have this right. uh ingrained idea that living on islands is would be dumb insane. and impossible <laughs> <Yes>. right <laughs> exactly uh, who would do that yeah. <laughs> uh and uh i i grew up uh partially on uh, okinawa on uochina and we got hit with typhoons like <laughs> I don't know, five to 10 times uh, a year. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, I know that, that checks out. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but like uh, the coastals uh, kind of have some of that, actually probably more of that vibe actually than the islands themselves, because uh, especially with uh, Mioth, uh, the, the named uh, island, uh, that's actually pretty safe. <laughs> Comparatively. Yeah. Comparatively. Safe, Comparatively. safe uh, in the stillness <laughs> terms, yeah. yeah. Um, whereas the coastals, uh, they sounded a lot more uh, familiar to me. It's like, oh yeah, no. Uh, typhoons, tsunami. Yeah, no, th those things just happen. I'm like, those things do just happen. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, that, that checks out. Um <laughs> And there's this interesting tension between it's very dangerous and things are very temporary, uh, mm -hmm. but because uh, they are essentially tropical biomes with heavy rainfall, you can rebuild really quickly. Like if mm -hmm. if you want uh, lumber, it's right there. Just Always just there. go get it. Yeah. Like um, I think 
the biggest forest in the stillness. Uh, I'm blanking on the name and don't feel like getting the map out. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, it's ridiculously large forest. Um, I had to do math to figure out uh, the, the size of it. And I think I ended up concluding that it's like around 10 million square miles of forest. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, Fast. Yeah, no, that that explains why people forest. live on the fucking uh, coast. Because mm. um, ruminant structures in the stillness are made out of stone, but mm-hmm. you can slap together uh, a calm uh, made out of uh, lumber uh, real fast if it's that plentiful. <laughs> yep. Um, and it really speaks to that idea of... Uh resilience as well which also mm-hmm. happens particularly on the coastals it's like okay well comms gone rebuild rebuild um, yeah. yeah yeah and yeah. that's that's one of you know the the in the game terms one of the aspects of the the sort of calm phases of things is that like we said comms are essentially characters in the game mm. so they can suffer damage and conditions related to that damage and they have, you know, essentially repair and rebuilding phases. You know, some of those those seasonal phases are going to be devoted, and it's going to be a process of deciding if the comm only has so many things it can do on its turn. You know, is it going to focus on rebuilding? Is it going to focus on, you know, trying to make sure that uh, the harvest is successful? Uh, you know, where are your, where's your attention and your resources going to go in order to ensure the calm is maintained? Just had a fun uh, tangent uh, to uh, attach to that. Mm-hmm. And that is that um, uh, the, I think, psychologist uh, Maslow and mm. uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs mm. is like uh, a thing that a lot of people are familiar with, but not a thing that a lot of people have to um, decide. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, and yeah. I think at the stillness, you actually, you actually Ooh. do. <laughs> like, yeah. It, food, water, shelter, pick two. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> There's almost uh, no right answer, <laughs> just mm-hmm. uh, what works for the moment, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that that in itself uh, kind of drives a lot of uh, fun experiences. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, fun experiences for the players, not necessarily sure. fun experiences well, for the characters. <laughs> and again, those, those, those necessities become story seeds of you know if the the comms food supply is threatened what are they going to do about it uh you know what what are the alternatives uh and how can the characters involve themselves in a story where they are helping to you know find seek out those alternatives or secure a new uh trading partner uh or you know whatever it may be that's going to mitigate this challenge uh, for the calm, you know, and every um, I had many, many years ago, I had a player in one of my games who asked me what bad things always have to keep happening. Um, and I'm like, it's a little thing called conflict. <laughs> and it, it drives stories. Um, you know, and although the 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 stillness is, it is a very grim setting in many ways. Uh, its challenges are the are the seeds of stories are mm. are the ways that that the group you know collaborates to say okay the characters face this the calm faces this challenge how are they going to deal with it yeah um and uh like alice was uh highlighting there's not necessarily uh right answers to these questions of survival mm. uh because uh if um the the comms short on food there are options for that uh like you were uh saying steve like Mm -hmm. you you could trade you could try and find a trading partner you could dump those resources into um trying to uh ensure that your crops succeed Mm -hmm. uh you could 
um break the law mm -hmm. uh and go uh hunter gatherer uh mm -hmm. the reason why i highlighted hunter gatherer and like said break the laws because uh technically hunter gatherers are uh obviated like um mm -hmm. the uh sansa and uh uh old sansa empire was like mm -hmm. okay we we have farms now stop hunter gathering mm -hmm. um and uh got rid of the uh the hunter uh use cast but if you need food you need food do what you need to do right <laughs> uh and uh speaking of use casts yes so uh a quick quick uh overview for folks uh who are less familiar with uh uh broken earth um there are uh seven uh major uh use casts and these are um both like uh social and uh, hereditary roles and mm -hmm. to a certain extent uh genetic uh where like the, these are like uh helpful character traits uh that are uh passed down uh where uh now they're kind of uh baked into society like these mm -hmm. are important roles that people have to fulfill um so there's uh the uh breeder cast uh which does what it says but is also like in charge of uh, a lot of important things uh centered around that um mm -hmm. often um um uh teaching like mm -hmm. if if you're the the group of people in charge of uh repopulation you're also kind of in charge of uh education mm -hmm. um which people don't usually think about people don't usually uh value that kind of labor but it's super fucking important yeah. Uh, yeah. uh there's uh the strongbacks uh which again do pretty much what they they uh sound like they're they're strong they carry a lot of things they do a lot of the physical labor mm -hmm. uh there's the resistance uh who um are hardier they are mm -hmm. uh less susceptible to famine uh plagues illnesses uh which in a world like the stone is is really helpful mm -hmm. um uh there's the leadership uh cast uh which again like these these are pretty uh helpful uh titles uh mm -hmm. um they're they're supposed to be uh very good at deciding uh what should happen and uh how but they they're supposed to make the hard choices uh when player characters aren't around mm -hmm. um uh there's uh the innovators um who uh invent things they uh try and come up with uh creative solutions uh to the many many problems in the stillness uh there are the guardians uh who we don't get into uh mechanically uh in the core book uh because they're really complicated uh they are they're a lot <laughs> and they're they're exceptionally narrow purpose uh yeah. as far as that goes because uh, the guardians key role is in controlling the origins yes um who are uh the the seventh cast that no one talks about no one mm -hmm. is like oh yeah seven seven major casts and uh origins are one of them no, no, no one no one says no that. one talks about that uh there there has in fact been a systemic uh purge of information uh towards that mm -hmm. everyone knows that there are seven everyone can only name six and they're like hmm uh, there are other use casts there in the books, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, we are short on time, so I'm not going to go into <laughs> them at all. Uh, instead, um, if we were starting a game in four minutes, Alice, what use cast uh, would your character be and why? Um, so I'd, I would go with the Resistance uh, one um, because 
I when I like to play, I, I like to feel a incredibly sort of uh, useful and comfortable. And I think in that world, a resistance one um, it is just would would help my own anxiety feel a bit more comfortable in a world like mm. the stillness. I think mm-hmm. really sensible, uh, Steve. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh gosh, I mean, there's so many dramatic possibilities with all of the the casts. Um, Alice took my first choice, so <laughs> uh, I think that if we were in a group together and we were coming up with characters, my second choice would be to go with Breeder because I find their um, their role as sort of social lubricant uh, to be really fascinating. Um, they're they're really the the uh, you know on the on the sort of bad side of things. They're sort of the town gossips. Um, but on the on the good side of things, they're just the 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 heart of the comms social network. Uh, and really, you know, if you want to find out what is going on in a comm, the breeders are the ones who know um, because they know and have just know everyone's business um, as far as that goes. And I, I find that quality about those characters really interesting. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I I kind of feel like. In absence of an actual uh, leadership cast uh, mm-hmm. person in charge of a comm, it's probably going to be a breeder because th- they're used to uh, solving people problems. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, for for me, uh, assuming that I wasn't running the game, uh, I would I uh, play an innovator. Uh, mm-hmm. I I enjoy sciencey things and uh, weird problem solving. Um, I swear I did not make the uh, Western coastal non-binary uh, innovator in the quick start. <laughs> I did not pattern them after myself. I, I wasn't like, uh, yeah, East Asian non-binary into science. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's just put myself in there. I didn't do that. It's total coincidence, uh, but it's great. Um, uh Real quick, before we get out of here, I mm-hmm. uh, want to uh, remind folks who you are and give you a chance to pitch things. Uh, Alice, uh, who are you? Uh, where can people see your work, uh, other work? Uh, and is there anything that you'd like to plug or let people know? Um, so, yeah, Alice Rendell, um, she, her, and uh, so currently I, I work at uh, Ubisoft Um uh, in video games, and we we will have many projects and announcements in the future. Um, mm. So please check that out. Uh, Steve, uh, who are you? Uh, where can people find your work and anything that you'd like to plug? Uh, so I'm Steve Kenson, uh, staff designer with Green Renee Publishing. Um, folks can also find me at uh, stevekenson.com, my um, very occasionally updated blog. Um, that has uh, links to my bibliography and all of my work for folks who are interested in checking it out. Awesome. Uh, I'm Hiro Mikota. Uh, I I do a lot of things. Uh, I'm the line developer for Scion. Uh, we'll have a bunch of books coming out. Uh, I also uh, wrote a bunch of stuff uh, for Pugmire Second Edition, uh, which, through sheer coincidence, is going to heavily overlap uh, with this uh, campaign. So mm. if you like this uh, and maybe you want to play a dog uh, who is uh, just the best and uh, uh, helps people, uh, well, not people, uh, other mm. other dogs, other animals, yes. uh, check out uh, that backer kit. Kickstarter? I don't know. I'm not in charge of that. Uh, <laughs> and uh, with that, uh, we'll we'll catch you next time. Uh, have a good one. Thanks, Thank everybody. you so much. Bye. Stay safe.